archaeologist Jonathan Gray has dedicated his life to opening up history. He's a real-life Indiana Jones. No, I'm not exaggerating. Take this quote from one of his recent newsletters. I have been ambushed, kidnapped, and had a gun in my back. Jonathan Gray speaks to us today from New Zealand. Jonathan, let's dive right into your book, Dead Man's Secrets Update. One part that reminds me of the Indiana Jones adventures is your description of underground tunnels built by ancient man. You've entered some of these, right? Tell us what you found. These tunnels actually go for hundreds of miles, uh, Steve, and some of them even disappear under the sea. If I may cut in for a moment, I'd like to let everyone know that the ancient tunnel we're looking at now is in Cappadocia, Turkey. Now back to you, Jonathan. It looks like there was at one time an intercontinental tunnel system, and uh, it traversed mountain ranges, uh, jungles, deserts. Uh, in fact, uh, no, nothing above the ground was an obstacle to them. Why haven't we heard more about these tunnels? Skepticism gets in the way of a lot of discoveries. And uh, my answer to skeptics is also, if you're going to be skeptical, why don't you be skeptical about your skepticism? Many chapters of your book discuss out-of-place artifacts. One story that particularly stands out tells about an ancient complex of underground rooms discovered in Southern California. A team of archaeologists from a college investigated. What unusual objects did they find? They found uh, a pictorial evidence that man uh, knew the art of flight, uh, that dinosaurs uh, were contemporaneous with man, operations were very sophisticated and advanced. What has government done to keep these discoveries a secret? The photographs that had been taken, as well as any artifacts that had been taken out, were, were snatched away. The owner of the property asked what was going on. He was told to keep quiet if he wanted to continue living. The U.S. government isn't the only one distorting our view of history. Your own country of New Zealand is covering up a find in the Waipawa Forest. What is that all about? History, as taught in the schools here in New Zealand, is that the first people to come here were uh, pre-Maoris, they call them Maoris, uh, followed by the Maori people who presently live here along with the, the, the other races. And this finding in the Waipura Forest actually showed that Celtic people had been to New Zealand long, long before this. And that's actually what we're looking at now. Celtic ruins in New Zealand. Remains are distinctly Celtic, such as found in Europe and, and elsewhere. Here the motive for cover-up is a little easier to understand. What do you suspect? And it's interesting that the New Zealand government uh, was pressurized to place a clamp on publicity for 50 years in the, into the future before this could be revealed publicly. I guess the reason for this is that there's a land claim going on with some tribes who say they're the first settlers here and that they are trying to get some land from uh, the government. Of course, the Maoris are generally considered an indigenous group, but this new evidence suggests the first people in New Zealand might have been Celts, who lived in Great Britain and other parts of Europe. Jonathan, one of the themes running through most of your books is the existence of high technology in ancient times. One of the best examples from Dead Man's Secrets Update is the Black Knight Satellite. Can you tell us a little about it? Way back in the early days, when um, satellites were first put into orbit, uh, now when was that? Sputnik went into orbit in October 1957. A U.S. satellite followed in January 1958. Scientists discovered another object, and this was in polar orbit. It was huge compared with the largest U.S. satellite. This is a picture that was originally identified as the Black Knight. Later, NASA claimed it was merely a so-called thermal blanket from a U.S. satellite called Discoverer 8. So this particular picture may or may not be the actual Black Knight. It was discussed 
in the New York Times, uh, Newsweek wrote about it, Life magazine, other great magazines. And uh, since that time, Stephen has been buried in the fine print. And why is this top secret? There's a vested interest in perpetuating the history that's taught in the universities and, and, and places of learning. And uh, to admit that there was a technology in the past, a human technology that could have placed us in orbit around the Earth, uh, would mean that our whole, uh, our whole popular teaching method of, of evolution and so on would be in jeopardy. To sum it up, ancient man was not the savage evolution leads us to believe. Jonathan, I've got to ask, how do you think all this technology developed so long ago? All the observations of science show that pool of genetic information in our bodies has to be there to start with from our ancestors. So what we're looking at here is ancestors who were as clever as us, and I believe even more so. Jonathan, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Likewise with you, Steve. You're one of my favorite authors. Dead Man's Secrets Update is available at Jonathan Gray's website, beforeus.com. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.